Hey guys, this is a continuation of my last video, how to make Flappy Bird in Game Salad. If you didn't catch that, the link will be right here or in the description down below. So this video is just answering some comments that were made in my last video, like um, how to add images and also change scenes and a little bit more than that. So anyway, without any further ado, here is the video. All right, first thing we're gonna do is create some new scenes. So to get there, you would click home and underneath the scenes tab. Anyway, so we want to add some scenes. So in the bottom left corner, there is a plus sign. Click that plus sign and call the scene home. Add another scene called high score. And another scene called game over. Okay, click and drag the home so it's in front of the initial scene. So that is the first scene to load up. So double click on home. And we're gonna create an actor called button. So add actor and call it button. Make the size 200 and the height 50. Now go home again. We're back to the back to the scene. Click and drag the button over, and I'm just gonna center it. All right. Double click on it, on the button, and create a rule that says actor receives event, touch is pressed, then it's gonna change a scene. So change scene to initial scene. And we also want it to display text. So click and drag display text over to it. And that's going to say play now. And we're going to change the color of that. So I'm just going to make it black. All right. Now go back to our scene and click and drag another button over. So double click on that button and drag in display text. This will be called high score. Set the font to black again. There you go. And then add a rule that says actor receives event, touch is pressed. Then it will change the scene to high score. All right, now let's test this out. So play takes you to the play scene. Go back to our home button. You can do that by going to any by double clicking on any of the scenes in your bottom bar. And then high score. So it takes you to high score as you can see as it's highlighted in blue. All right. Now go back to our home scene. And we also want to add some graphics. So let's just create, make the spawner there. And now, since we have everything in the spawner, we can, that would, since we have everything in the spawner, that would be, that would just make it so the bars are spawning, that was weird. Uh, are spawning so you have something going in the moving in the background while you're in the play scene. So there you have it, bars are there. And you might encounter an error where the bars actually go in front of the text. So to fix that, go to our home scene again and send the spawner to back. Or if you have a background, just send it backward, anything. All right, now we want to go to our high score. We're just going to create a back button for now. So display text, drag over display text, and just say back. And change the font to black because it looks better. OK. And when you 
create a rule that says actor receives event, touch is pressed. Then we want to change a scene. So change scene to home. All right, there you have it. Now go to our initial scene, double click on our actor, I mean our person, and that should bring you over to here. So game dot game over is true. We have this thing where it says it moves to 30 and then it change then we're now we're going to make it so it changes to a scene when you when you die. So we still want that animation of it falling to the floor before the game ends. So let's say after uh, two seconds, we want to change the scene to game over. And now we also want to go to our game over scene so we have back button and play again. So add a button. This button will say, add it just below the center. This button will say back. So go in here. I'm sorry, it'll say play again. So go in here. Dis display text. Play again and make the text black and change scene to initial scene. All right. Now create a button that actually says back, so you just go back to the home screen. So display text. Hello, um, back. Change the color to black. And rule, actor receives event, touch is pressed then change the scene to the initial scene. I'm sorry, to the home scene. And I think I made a mistake on this other button. I forgot to add the rule, so when it is pressed, it would work. All right, so actor receives event, touch is pressed. Then you go to the scene. All right, now we have a fully navigatable um, game. So play now, it takes you there, you die, and then you move over to the game over screen. So play again, it takes you back to that. Play again. Oh, I actually made a mistake. So in our play again button, we need to actually change the attribute so it is game over is false now. So change attribute and put it in the when the actor is is pressed. So change attribute game dot game over to false. All right, now it should work properly. So you die. Then you move over to the game over screen after two seconds, you press play again, then it's a, it starts the whole game over again, you die, it, it just, uh, it works. All right, high score, back, everything's now navigatable now. Now we need to go to our initial scene now, and now we're gonna create the score. So, we need to add an attribute that's called score. So in attribute type integer choose call this score. And right now we're actually gonna create another attribute called high score. So high score. 
All right, go back to our actors, add an actor, and we will call this score. Double click on that actor. And this will say display text. Click the E, drop down arrow, game dot score. Press the check mark. And we also want to change the background because the background's white too. So set the opacity to zero. In underneath color, set the opacity to zero. Now in this initial scene, uh, let me reload this real quick. Play now. Right. Actually, <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to drag the score onto the scene. So drag the score onto the scene, put it in like the top left corner and now we should see the score. The score is zero right now and we don't have anything changing the score so it will it will always be zero. Alright, now in our game over scene we also want to drag over the score and make it bigger too. So when the game's over you can see the score. All right, now let's go back to our initial scene, and now we're actually going to make it so the score is counted. So double click on our score. We're going to drag over a timer that says every second we're going to change the score. So every second change attribute game.score to press the E again, game.score plus one, check mark. All right, now let's preview this just to give you, show you. All right, there you have it. Changes the score over time. And it displays on the screen. So home. Sorry, go back to our initial scene, double click on the score again. And now we want to change the high score. So drag in a rule into the timer that says attribute game.score is greater than game.high score. So game high score. Then you want to say change attribute game dot high score to game dot score now we want to save that attribute so save attribute game dot high score for key of e or whatever letter you want whatever key you can use just so it's as a reference for later. I'm just using E for quickness. All right, now let's go home. Click on our play, game, play button. And we want to say load attribute, key E for the attribute of game.highscore. I already had this loaded in from an earlier test, sorry. Okay. So now, just to test that, let's go to our game.highscore scene, create an actor called high score. double click on that, set the color to opacity to zero, and change the text, I'm sorry, display text. So display text, click the E, drag it, uh, game, high score, there you go. Go back to our high score scene. Now we need to drag the high score on there. So, like that. 
make it bigger and preview so it says it's zero because the high score is zero back play now just gonna say three die and then say your score is six go back high score is now six and when you reload it that's just a thing that happens with uh, game solid when you reload the game it automatically resets everything all right game solid crashed on me while i was trying to do something so i'll just use this as a reminder to save often game solid does not save automatically like some other programs this one you have to automatically save everything so make sure you do or else if it crashes everything will be lost as you can see here my whole tutorial is lost but for the rest of this I already did everything so for the rest of this I'm just gonna show you how to set and change an image that's that's it so let's create a new actor I'm gonna call this image just as a tutorial set the size to uh, 50 300 now I already have some images in my project folder but just to do that you just find an image and then you click and drag it Oops. you click and drag that image over to the images folder so right there as you can see all right it's as simple as that now to change an actor's image you can just click and drag that over there now if you want the image to change after something's done you need to create a rule so rule drag that over actor receives event touch is outside this will say change image to number two which is just a flipped around version of what I had before all right home quickly show you this preview it now it flips to the thing so as you can see that's how you do it thank you guys for watching anyway guys if you like this tutorial please subscribe down below hit the like button if you have any comments or questions leave them down in the comment section down below uh, check out my website check me out on twitter um that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching bye